I recently ventured to Nintendo's San Francisco office for a chance to try out Mario Kart 8's first DLC pack, including our first look at the game's amiibo support too. Now we've already posted full gameplay videos of all four tracks we were able to try, which we'll be breaking down even further in the coming days, so make sure to check those out for a complete look at how those tracks will play. And yes, you can find links to all of that in the description below. Anyways, in case you haven't heard, the first DLC pack includes four new vehicles, three new characters being Cat Peach, Tanuki Mario, and Link, and most importantly, eight new tracks being Yoshi Circuit, Excite Bike Arena, Dragon Driftway, Mute City, Wario's Goldmine, Rainbow Road, Ice Ice Outpost, and Hyrule Circuit, half of which we were able to try out for ourselves. Okay, now DLC occasionally has a stigma of being half-hearted content tacked onto the original game. But based on my playtime, not only is that anything but the case here, but in some respects, these tracks are even more distinct than the original roster. Take Hyrule Circuit for example, which of course is based on The Legend of Zelda, a concept that the track fully embraces as you'll find yourself racing across Hyrule Field, into Hyrule Castle, and then through a valley lined with Deku Babas. Okay, so maybe that's basically what you would expect from a Zelda-based track. But as I hinted at before, these tracks take the crossover concept a few steps further. For example, instead of finding coins scattered all over the track, you'll now pick up rupees instead. And check out what happens when you get an item. Yep, that's a classic Zelda sound. But perhaps the coolest thing is how the developers incorporated Zelda's penchant for puzzles. You see, the Master Sword in the castle hides a secret. Because, if you manage to trigger the three diamonds in the hallway leading up to it all within a few seconds of each other, a special shortcut will open up leading right over the Master Sword. And you'll even hear that classic Zelda jingle for solving the puzzle too. <laughs> it's pretty great. And the Mute City track based on F-Zero takes this gameplay crossover concept even further. Not only is it the first course of Mario Kart 8 to take place entirely in anti-gravity, complete with a suitably twisty track true to the original series, but it even changes the coin mechanic entirely, in that there are no coins to be found here at all. Instead, you can only earn coins by driving through the recharge strips that border several portions of the track, as if it were refilling your energy in the F-Zero games. It's a super clever way of mixing elements of the original game with the gameplay of Mario Kart 8. And then there's the Excite Bike Arena track, which will actually change every time you race on it, with a different arrangement of hills, jumps, and other hazards being randomly moved around each time, which serves as an homage to the myriad track designs in the original game. Now besides the crossover tracks and a couple of returning retro ones, the DLC also has two entirely original ones more in line with the typical Mario Kart fare, such as Dragon Driftway. And the track's name doesn't lie, as you'll first enter the mouth of a giant dragon statue, which you might recognize as Gobblegut from Super Mario Galaxy 2, before racing across a scaly back for the rest of the course, as it winds through a Japanese temple and past other sites. Oh, and nearly the entire thing is in anti-gravity too. Now beyond the new tracks and characters, another new feature that will be enabled on the same day as the DLC's release is support for amiibo figures, and you won't have to buy the DLC to take advantage of it. So here's how it works. After accessing the amiibo option from the title screen, you'll be able to scan in any one of 10 supported amiibo in order to unlock a costume of that character for your Mii. Which in Kirby's case means you'll net yourself this somewhat unsettling helmet design, with Kirby perpetually staring down the opponents behind you. Oh, and thankfully you won't have to rescan amiibo every time you want to use a particular costume, as they'll be permanently unlocked for good. So altogether, I had a great time with the DLC. The new tracks are a blast to play, with a host of unique features from the original games blended seamlessly with Mario Kart 8's gameplay style. Really, the attention to detail here truly is fantastic. Even the DLC characters have been lavished with detail, such as how Tanuki Mario actually turns into a statue for one of his taunts. And you won't have to wait long to try it out for yourself, as pack 1 of the DLC launches on November 13th for $7.99. Thanks for watching, make sure to stay tuned to GameExplained.com for more on Mario Kart 8's DLC and other things gaming as well.